I was born in Seguin, Texas, Guadalupe County, on December 28, 1932. Uh, we um, moved from Seguin to San Marcos when my father was approached by Mr. Joe Freeman, uh, who had purchased uh, several thousand acres of uh, ranch land here in San Marcos, between here and Wimberley. And, uh, Mr. Freeman approached my father and asked him if he would uh, like to move here and, and help him run the ranch. And my father agreed because at that time it was during the Depression. He was working for WPA in Seguin, digging ditches in the streets for one dollar a day. Um, and of course, uh, a lot of people uh, were um, very poor at that time, and a lot of people were receiving uh, food from a program called Relief, and my father did not like that. He would rather work and, and make ends meet as best as he could, rather than stand in line and wait for groceries from the Relief program. He, um, uh, started uh, working on the ranch, uh, rebuilding fences. He got help, he, they, they got him some more help, and he started rebuilding fences, and eventually they started bringing in Hereford cattle. Uh, way later on, Santa Gertrudez cattle, and of course, a lot of sheep and goats. And uh, so, and the horses, of course, and uh, he would get up in the morning, uh, feed the horses, saddle the horse, and go out and check the cattle. And he was a, a cowboy, I guess you could say, a vaquero. Uh, the pay was $35 a month, plus we had the roof over our head and we had access to uh, cow milk. We made our own butter, chickens. Uh, we had all the meat we could eat. and. Uh, uh, a garden. Grew up on the Freeman Ranch as well as all my brothers and sisters. Yes, we grew up there and uh, we would come to school. Uh, Daddy would bring us and uh, we stayed with a family here in San Marcos, the Gonzalez family, and boarded us there with them. He would bring us on Sunday night leave us there and we would, uh, he enrolled us in uh, at St. John's parochial school and uh, we stayed there all week. He would come and pick us up Friday night, take us home for the weekend and bring us back Saturday or uh, Sunday night. The Freemans built a beautiful rock house, oh I guess about half a mile from where we lived. And uh, of course they had it beautifully landscaped and all. So my job uh, was to go out there and turn the water on and water the plants and rake the leaves and just walk around the place. And uh, I like to stay over there because it was a new house. It was a pretty house. The landscaping was beautiful. I developed a, a great love for plants and trees and also a great love for reading because uh, they, the Freemans held, had a big well. It was a whole room where the water well was, and they had they stored books and magazines there. So I would spend a lot of time in there reading books like Reader's Digest, Kiplinger's, National Geographic, and those are the type of books that I really grew up with, and uh, uh, I just couldn't read enough. I, I developed such a love for reading because the more I read, the more I learned about this, that, and the other. I, I was reading how to do budget thing and, and saving money and earning money when, when I was uh, nine and 10 years old. Besides making butter and our buttermilk and what have you, uh, by the way, we were all taught how to milk a cow and ride a horse. And my father taught us to shoot a gun Good. as well. Anyway, uh, one of my best uh, and happiest 
uh, memories of, of the ranch was during the holidays when my mother would make tamales and we would gather around the table and some of my aunts would come and help because it's, it's a long process making tamales. And I learned as a child how to put the masa on the, on the corn chuck and, or shuck, I have problems sometimes with my CH and SH. And um, cooking tamales, which by the way, Mr. Harry Freeman loved. He couldn't wait for the holidays because he had to have some of mom's tamales. Sure. Besides um, uh, the cooking there and making of tamales, another thing was my mother and my grandmother making soap, lye soap. They used the tallow, is that what you call it, from the, cow, the cows that they killed, and lye, and Lord knows what all else, but I remember it smelling really bad. I didn't like to when they made, made soap. But of course, I guess everybody else did, because that's what we used to wash clothes. And I remember a big old iron pot in the middle of the yard with some fire under it and boiling the, the white clothes so they would come out real white. But I remember Daddy bringing home once in a while a little goat or a little sheep whose mother had died or the mother was sick and couldn't take care of it. And he would bring it home and we had to bottle feed it. And we also took care of a couple of uh, of little deer, baby deer, that daddy would find, you know, starving to death. Uh, the mother had either been killed or was sick or something. And these little deer were found and, and daddy couldn't stand seeing a, a, a sick baby animal. And so he would bring it home and, and we, was, we would raise it with, uh, with a, a baby bottle and uh, until the animal got big enough to just go away, walk away from us. Uh, I remember I cried once because we had one and we named it Bambi, uh, as, just like the one we read about in the books and all. So when Bambi left one day and never came back, I cried for a whole week. <laughs> uh, St. John's Parochial School uh, was the only school that I attended up to the eighth grade. Uh, when it reached the eighth grade, and, and that's the highest grade that they had, I should have gone to the junior high up at the university because we didn't have a public school, public school buildings then in San Marcos. We used uh, university property to have our public school. But by then, uh, my mother had had several other children, and uh, uh, my father, um, I guess, like many other families, Hispanic families, believed that a girl really didn't need that much education. So I was uh, asked by my father to stay home and help mother with the children and with the cooking and with all the household chores. And, and although I loved school very much and I, want, I would have liked to keep on, I just decided to abide by his rules and just stayed home so as well as my sister and uh, so I never graduated from public school. I never made it to the 12th grade until way after I was married. I think I had been married about six or seven years when I went back to night school and I went for oh I guess about 18 months and then Mrs. Sarah Altenhoff, who was a public school teacher here, said that I was ready to take my GED test, which I did. And she said that uh, when the results came back, she said that, that I was one of the highest uh, achievers on a GED test, and she encouraged me to go to college. We had the most wonderful nuns uh, out of Victoria, and they were the Incarnate Word Sisters, and they were German. Uh, they were very, very good. They were very strict, uh, didn't allow us to speak Spanish. They told us it was for our own good. 
Um, so I remember I loved to talk a lot and in the playground I would forget and start speaking Sp Spanish since it was my first language. So Sister Agnes would say, Ophelia, you're not supposed to be speaking Spanish. You have to learn English, remember. If you want to learn a lot, learn everything you can, you have to speak English. So I'm going to have to send you over to clean the vigilites. The vigilites are the, those little red and white candles in the, by the altars of church that got really, really black. So I would be handed a cloth with a little oil in it, and there I would be cleaning vigilites <laughs> as punishment. Uh, I would do that for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I, I would go out and play again. But um, we had, oh, upwards of 300 children. They called us Mexican-Americans back then. Okay. And uh, there was another school where everybody was Hispanic. There was, I understand there wasn't a single Anglo at that school. And it was called the South Side School, which today to this day is called Bonham. But back then it was called South Side. And that's where all the Hispanics went to public school. Because at the parochial school you had to pay tuition. Uh, and although it was only 50 cents a month, a lot of families couldn't afford 50 cents a month. And so, um, even us, you know, my father, my mother would sometimes send uh, butter and eggs to the nuns in lieu of the tuition. Older children, three of my older children got to go to Catholic school for a few years, but then after it closed down, we had no choice but public school. I had a couple of uh, bad experiences with our school system. One was the fact that I felt that uh, the cheerleader program uh, was a little bit biased in that there were no Hispanic girls in, the, in their cheerleader uh, program. Um, not too many in the band, and a lot of it may have been economics, but I also felt that, you know, if the teachers, if the school board tried better, they could have brought more in. The other issue was um, the dress code. At that time, we had a superintendent that uh, did not allow the students to wear jeans and t-shirts. Their, the boys' hair must not be uh, longer than the, mm, your, the middle of your ear. Uh, and, you know, I felt that um, studies would be more important than what you wore to school or what, how long your hair was. And also, um, I kept looking for books that had anything to do with uh, Mexicans or Hispanic history in the library, and I could never find any. And so all of those things just kind of came together, and I said, well, you know, we need to do something. And, and that wasn't the only one. There were other people in the community that kept complaining about the same thing. So. Um, we looked around and uh, nobody wanted to, to do it. Nobody wanted to run for the school board. <laughs> uh, you do it. No, I'm, I'm a woman. I can. Oh, but you can. Yes, you can. You're more interested in this and you're interested in that and you're the right person for it. So I said, well, okay, I guess I'm it. And, uh, but I don't have any, I don't have the money. I don't have uh, the even I, I thought about clothing. I thought about several things that I would need. Oh, we'll supply that. We'll do that. We'll we'll help you with a campaign. And and I have always been the type of person that likes to get involved. That if I believe in something, I better get involved and do something about it. So I had joined the League of Women Voters. 
I had involved my girls in the brownies and then Girl Scouts. I had joined a club called the Gardenia Club, which was, which was a social club in town. I had joined a couple of church organizations that I saw that were proactive in, in terms of, uh, you know, being active in the church and whatever. And so uh, I just couldn't sit still. Whatever I saw that I could do for the benefit of, of a lot of people, I, I wanted to do it. And so I had the support of the League of Women Voters. They helped me with money. They helped me with uh, writing out my ads. And there was an organization of men back then, and women as well, Women's Auxiliary, called the American GI Forum. They helped me financially. And uh, they helped me to walk the streets for me and uh, uh, pass out literature and what have you. Consequently, I, I won the, the race by a pretty good margin. And to the surprise of many people in town, I, I won for the school board. But they were terrible years because we had the famous boycott, school boycott, during that time. And of course, it was controversial because the rest of the school board members felt that the students uh, were viola violating the law and they wanted uh, to bring in a lawsuit against those board members that had supported the boycott and, and the people in the community that had supported the boycott. Of course, that didn't go anywhere. And uh, so, but eventually, um, we won and things settled down and things beginning began to look better. They started hiring more um, Hispanic teachers and one counselor and uh, um, more staff in, in the front office and things started getting better. They started bringing in uh, textbooks that talked about Hispanic history and uh, things did get a little better. Yes, three years was enough because it was very um, time-consuming for me. Some of the meetings lasted until one o'clock in the morning. All the um, uh, discussion back and forth and and then do we get a mediator for this? Do we do this? Do we do that? And I would get home at 1.30, sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning, and I would have to look around and see if the children had done their homework. Their father was tired and already asleep, and, and it got to be quite uh, a he heavy load. And by then I was working full time because we needed the money, you know, with so many children in school. And I had to get up like at 5 o'clock in the morning to get everybody ready. And then I played taxi, dropping children at, the, at high school, at junior high, at elementary, at kindergarten. And I was just running myself ragged. Um, half time I would work in the office at Community Action and half of the time at the health department at the courthouse.